Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Good to see you. So, I don't always do this, but I just wanted to show you. You'll see the lens is kind of fogged up. This is 7.30 in the morning, and of course it's already 90 degrees. So, I didn't think to, to wipe the lens, but this will clear up in a couple of minutes. So, we'll be able to see this. Just thought I'd uh, kind of do this kind of format. We're never able to talk, you know, because of the, you know, the mower's too loud for us to talk. And it's kind of looking at this and just kind of understand what's, what's happening here. So, you know, kind of a teaching moment. Now we all know how to mow grass, right? But it's interesting that there are some grasses um, that work well with the different machines. So this one doesn't work well with me uh, mulching. And I'll show you in a minute. So... Uh, this is a standard, you know, southern grass. It's not, uh, it's just more of Bahia than anything else. But naturally, there's some weeds in there. So this is not St. Augustine or Bermuda. It's just uh, all really uh, uh, Bahia. Bahia, uh, and you'll look at my mower here. This is a right 36. And you'll see why I have to have a 36 to get into these small gates. So anyway, as it clears up, you'll see that the Baha'i is a little bit tough. It kind of swirls around the blade. It doesn't want to cut it clean. Now this is, this blade is actually, this is the second job on a fresh sharpened blade. But you'll see it kind of wants to just lay down, especially early in the morning. Uh, when it lays down, I have to go over it a couple times. I mean, for the most part, a good 70% of it, not a problem. But you'll see, the, of course, the tracks. You know, we don't uh, um, have uh, stripes. You know, we can't lay stripes. It's just more of the grass just laying down. Um, and I have to go back over it because otherwise it's going to look pretty bad. Some areas are more thicker than other areas, and, you, and you'll see that. Uh, but, and, and again, you know, this is 7.30 in the morning, and, you know, the lens is starting to clear up a little bit. You see the next-door neighbors, how high his is. I'm cutting this at three inches. Uh, so, in most of the yards here, you know, other than St. Augustine, St. Augustine likes it a little bit longer, at least four inches, possibly five inches, uh, the height in it. So, you see it, uh, I have to go over that area again. That's the only area, the rest of it is okay. It's pretty thin, so it's okay. Uh, you know, of course, you know, I go in squares or sometimes circles as it gets smaller. I don't... Uh, do one of these three-point turns there's no need on the southern grass to do that because we're not striping right so i'm saving the time where you guys have to kind of go back and try to create those stripes you know i don't we don't do that so you know i'm just cutting and going squares circles doesn't really matter so um and what you see there is tire tracks and that's all there so this of course is uh, in the heat of the moment we're in uh, late july so it's pretty hot. It's warm and toasty. I am now starting, uh, and I normally start at 8 o'clock. I try to be respectable in our in my time with, with the people, but this is actually 7, this one is 7.30 in the morning. I did a previous job at 7 o'clock. This one will take me about 22 minutes to cut, trim, blow, and this is a typical yard for Florida. So this is unedited, other than the, uh, me putting you know, me talking through it and the putting the captions on it. So uh, this is the raw footage. You get to see everything in there. I don't do filters. Uh, so, you know, anyway, you can you can see for yourself. And uh, let me know if you like this type of thing. I'll do a little circle bubble. Uh, just put my uh, face on there, you know, probably on the corners there. And uh, just kind of narrate what we do. Um, so southern grasses are certainly different, but, you know, grass is grass, right? We just cut it and off we go. You guys have to cut yours. I'm curious on what length you cut it. Is that three, four, or five inches? Uh, now, this is a maintenance lawn. What I mean by that is I cut it every single week. Uh, every single week we'll edge. Now, sometimes we'll change the edge up and I'll use the edger, the single blade edger, or I'll use the, uh, the weed trimmer. And then sometimes I'll do a treat, uh, what they call a cheater edge, where I'm not spinning the um, the trimmer, you know, backwards and cutting that edge. It doesn't need that every single week. Now, every other week, okay, we'll, we'll take care of business then. But 
Um, because we're doing this every single week, uh, you'll see that I'll do a combination of different things. That's how I do it here. It's how it's done in Florida. So you'll see some of the obstacles here. Uh, again, the backyard is more full of weeds than it is the front yard. The obstacles certainly make it challenging and absorb a lot of time up, especially on the trimming side. We all know that. I don't move anything, and uh, and that's just a policy of mine. So uh, the customers understand that, and I will trim around that. Now, some people say, well, why don't you just move that little table and just go around the corner? Well, what happens if the table breaks? Right? I'm liable for it, right? I moved it. Customers say, hey, you're responsible. Nope. So I don't move anything. I'll do everything I possibly can, like the ladder there. Now, I don't think you guys move ladders, right? Trim all that area. If the customer says, hey, can you move, move the ladder and trim? Well, you, customer can move the ladder. Get ready for me, right? You know I'm coming a certain week, and if you want certain things mowed, you move the things, and I'll mow it. You know, I don't, If I see grass, I'll, I'll mow it, right? I'm not going to avoid it, but it's not my responsibility to move your obstacles and place them back. It just takes so much time. Can you imagine all this stuff that I'm moving? No, not doing that. So anyway, that's how um, I present myself. Customers are okay. Like I said, my schedule is full. So um, it is something that, that uh, I'm, I've been full for three plus years now. And there's always that occasional person that sells their property. And I'll fill it up real quick so it's not hard. In fact, I just now canceled my website. I don't know why I was paying for three years because I really don't need the business. I'm actually going to start to cut down in my business, not do as much as I get older. You know, we get a little slower, right? I can't keep up as fast. But anyway, I've had this right for, uh, goodness, for four plus years now. Um, and it's been good for me. Uh, I enjoyed it. It took a... I almost got a fixed deck. I'm glad I didn't because there are some yards I have to go up on the uh, uh, on the uh, blade height. And uh, just that, that pole on the left, it's a floating deck. So it goes up and down uh, based on the height that I, I want to. So there are a couple houses that I'll do at four inches and majority of it will be at three inches. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions on what you guys do. I'm curious on the uh, northern grasses, what height do you do it at? And, and, and do you normally do a maintenance service like this? Now, I know for some, if you're irrigated and you're fertilized, you're going to have to definitely mow that in the summer, especially in the south. So if you're in Georgia or in Tennessee, Virginia, how about big, big suns? Uh, you mow in some of these houses every single week? Now, some of them, if they're non-fertilized or non-irrigated, then yeah, you can probably do it every two weeks, I would imagine. But here in Florida, this is a tropical weather system. So uh, we do get a lot of rains in the uh, summer pattern here. Uh, they're, you know, they're not gully washers, but they're, they're good, solid pounders. Um, and they're, they're you know, rain for a good 20 minutes, half hour. We're not allowed to use uh, nitrogen and phosphate type of fertilizer uh, because of the runoff. So I'm sure you guys heard in, in the Atlantic as well as the Gulf, the red tide. We get a lot of red tide, which is, you know, that's what the scientists say, that, that the, some of that is uh, the phosphorus and the nitrogen is the cause of red tide. Red tide's been around since way before fertilizer. So that's been a proven thing, but I think it adds to the red tide. So it is interesting that, that you know, come, uh, I think it is June 1st all the way until, um, goodness, October 1st, uh, we have a ban on nitrogen and phosphates. So we can use, um, you know, the, the micro fertilizers as long as it doesn't have the, uh, the N and the P in it, uh, but there are other things we can use that uh, can give us, uh, you know, even uh, iron, right? So put a little iron and give you that dark green color, but as you can see, this is full of weeds, so you're not going to fertilize this. You're not going it, to, it's a non-irrigated lawn, so anywhere that certainly there's shade is better growth than the grass, but uh, with weeds, it's just, it's fill dirt, right? You just fill up the spots. So you'll see I'm having to kind of go around a certain area because I keep seeing that I'm missing a little bit. And, you know, the more I can do with the mowers instead of trimming, the better, right? 
So, uh, and you know, that's what we're doing. So I'm basically done here. We're going to go through the side, put this away, and get the uh, trimmer out. I'm not going to do the edger, as you know. I told you that earlier. But uh, we'll do a cheater edge, and I'll show you what I mean by a cheater edge. It's just getting the grass, you know, there's no runners here. So St. Augustine, you'd have runners. So runners would go into the actual... Uh, cemented areas whether it be sidewalks driveways uh, and uh, of course roadways this there's no runners so grass gets bent over um, and touches the you know the cement area so we'll take care of that uh, but as you can see right there it's just a good clean edge there's no reason for me to get an edger because i i really can't get a good edge when it's like that so and i'll do what they call a cheater edge here in a moment you'll see where i'm just scraping whatever is off of the uh the cemented areas you can see i you know there's still a good edge there from last week aiming the camera down to and, and i realize now that i'm going to, have to aim it down a little bit further yeah, you know it's a guessing game right we don't always know what because we can't see what it looks like um in in the grass or in the camera because we're just looking at the grass so i'll have to kind of remember um this is the gopro it's mounted to my chest there's your cheater edge, see? I'm just scraping it right off the sidewalk. It already has an edge, so there's no need for me to get the edger out and do that. So, um, anyway, so that's the uh, cheater edge. I don't know if you guys do that. But anyway, the GoPro is mounted to my chest. It's a uh, magnetic mount. Um, and, um, of course, I can't see visually because it's on my chest what it looks like in, in the footage until I see it like right now I'm seeing it for the first time kind of just going over it with you um, I'm having to tape this twice this is the raw footage of uh, me doing the lawn and of course I'm taping myself again so I can make this little circle uh, and you'll see it's bad I think it's sometimes it's pretty cool but sometimes it gets annoying right but anyway that's how we do it um, in uh, in here in the south and remember it's tropical weather that we get so if you're uh, you know north of the uh, transition line and uh, you'll see if north florida will get kind of some northern grasses so uh, you can uh, certainly stripe in you know tallahassee areas and uh, jacksonville's they get a lot more colder than we do you know, so their grasses sometimes are a little bit different. More, of, and I don't, I don't think they have, you know, Kentucky uh, or KBB. Um, there are some other grasses they do have there, but and they do have Saint Augustine as well. Saint Augustine doesn't really like the cold weather, so it uh, it really thrives on the warm and it really grows super fast. That's why this has to be done weekly, even though this is not Saint Augustine, but just the summer grass here in Florida has to be done weekly. Right, the next thing you know, it's four inches deep. And, you know, you can't cut off more than a third of it at a time. Then you got, what are you going to do with all the volume? So, as I told you, I have a mulching deck, which, you know, doesn't have a uh, shoot blocker. Uh, it's just a solid welded piece that I don't do anything. The grass is always mulched, you know, every time I bring the mower out. So, um, sometimes if the grass is really, really tall, I got so much volume underneath that I can't escape it that sometimes I have to do what they call a fire break. A fire break is uh, in the middle of the yard, so when you go over it, you dump all your grass. Uh, and, you know, obviously because that vortex of grass going around, chopping, chopping, chopping. Uh, so you make it in the middle of it, uh, uh, again, a, like a fire break. You know how they do with, with fires, you know, fire doesn't jump. Uh, sometimes it does, I guess. But... Anyway, so um, when I pass that area that's no grass, it has a chance to go flat down um, and escape the vortex. So it kind of cleans out my mower, burps, if you will. And, you know, that, uh, that helps. So uh, I don't do a whole lot of long grass videos. It's not my forte. It's a lot of work. I certainly am not going to do it for free. That's not what I do. God bless these guys who, who do that, but, you know, that's not what I do. So this is a, like an educational teaching channel. So, excuse me, you'll see the grass here. So it kind of goes through in spots. And I'll try to square this up here a little bit. Again, cheater edge that flattens it down and uh, good to go.
I'll bring down the uh, the, the mower noise, but uh, and bring up the uh, volume back for the uh, weed eater, and uh, so you'll be able to hear that. You know, it's not loud at all. I can I certainly can talk over it, um, but you know I think this is sometimes is a better way. So yeah, I'll have to bring the camera down a little bit more to give you that uh, a better view and view and angle for the uh, trimmer. I call it fingers. I have to move it one finger or two fingers down based on what uh, tools I'm using. So I still got my uh, gas blower, um, and I do that um, again to keep it active. I'm going to keep both of them, and um, you know I do go through a lot of batteries on the blower. So depending on sometimes how I feel, sometimes I do I get tired of charging all the batteries. So it's a bad news about blowers, right? That's wet grass there. It's 7:30 morning, guys. So. It's a little dewy, but I'll trade off. I'll use my gas. I'll use the uh, the battery powered one. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I think I'm going to keep both of them for a while. Now the battery blower is good. It's decent. It's stronger than your normal homeowner version, but I think the gas blower is still the best way to go at this time. Um, I mean, they can give you more cfms but it's at the cost of more battery power so more speed more cfms more battery is needed so and i don't use a backpack so this is the strongest handheld battery um well i'm sorry the the one i have in the in the uh, trailer uh, so i'll use that it's the same cfms it's the same uh air speed as my gas one here the BG86, so the BGA86 is the battery version. It's identical measurements. I'm just conserving batteries today. That's all I'm doing today. So sometimes I'll use it, sometimes I don't. Plus, I still have these little oil, uh, the, you know, gas and oil mix. I have a, you know, probably a half a dozen left of those things. Like, what am I going to do? I'm going to give them away, but I'll still use them up. I'm one of those guys that just uh, kind of uses everything up. <laughs> and I think at that time, I'll probably go ahead and sell the gas one there. I realized what I did, and I'll show you here in a second. And, and I'll shut up for so you can hear me. I'm probably talking here in a little bit. But I did forget an area, and uh, I'll have to kind of go back. And, uh, and of course, that's what you got to do. But again, I think this whole thing is like 22 minutes long. So these are the small yards in Florida. Again, this was non irrigated and non fertilized, but I still have to cut it every single week. So there's no bi weekly cuts here. The only time I do bi weekly is in the uh, winter. And I still have to cut, right? So it, the grass still grows. So remember, we just don't have a lot of cool, cool days like you guys. I mean, we don't go in the 30s. Come on. You know, we go into the 50s maybe occasionally, but it's just yep. it's enough to stun well, it a little something. bit. But every grass here all Can't year long has to grow. So, go you know, watch me it. back and I'll, uh, I'll be quiet here. You can hear me now. It happens. What are you going to do, right? <laughs> I, can't, I don't want to drive back here when the customer spots it. You got to catch it now while you're here. Yep. For some reason, I didn't do this. Yep. All right. Oop. to the next on to the next
Okay. Yeah, that slipped. <laughs> yeah, I don't normally slam my door. It's just slipped. Oop. Down in the boondocks. Oh.